Welcome to Venice, a city unlike any other, known as the Queen of the Adriatic. Venice is a floating masterpiece of art, history, and a culture that has enchanted travelers for centuries. Built on more than 100 small islands in a lagoon, Venice is a maze of canals, bridges, and narrow alleyways that lead to hidden gems and secret corners. Its stunning architecture, from the Byzantine domes of St. Mark's Basilica to the Gothic beauty of the Dodges Palace. It is a testament to the city's wealth and power during the Renaissance. With its rich history, stunning art, and unique way of life, Venice is a destination that will leave you breathless. And welcome back to another video here, guys, on the Nomac Guides channel, where we share with you things to do in places all around the world. And in today's video, we will be sharing with you 10 things to do when visiting the incredible city of Venice, Italy. Well, I want to say there are so many different things that you can do in Venice. We narrowed it down to the top 10 things you can do while you're here. And with all of my Nomad Guides videos, these are not in any specific order from best to worst. They're just simply how I decided to put them in the video. So let's go ahead and hop right into this list of things to do in Venice. I'd say I expected it to be that way, just magical, because I've seen a lot of videos. I'm sure you guys saw so many videos about Venice and it's like magical and this beautiful place. So it's exactly the way it is. Like you're just like, wow, like every corner is just beautiful. Number one on the list is going to be ride the city ferry. One of the best ways to explore this beautiful city is by taking a ferry ride around the city. The city ferry, also known as the Vaporetto, is a public water bus that travels along the Grand Canal and the smaller canals throughout Venice. You can purchase tickets at the ferry station or on board the ferry. So you're able to buy your tickets out here and a lot of people recommend to get the multi-day pass to be able to get on multiple rides. As you glide along the canals, you'll see some of the city's most famous landmarks, including the Rialto Bridge and St. Mark's Square. Just imagine this though, like, imagine growing up in Venice. Like, you know, you walk downstairs, hop on the boat, take that to school. I mean, it's just a completely different life. Number two on the list is going to be the oldest coffee shop in Italy. Welcome to Cafe Florian. Located in the heart of St. Mark's Square, this cafe has been serving coffee to locals since 1720 so we're talking 300 years when you step inside you'll feel like you've stepped back in time the cafe is beautifully decorated with chandeliers marble tables and a stunning ceiling fresco like in a movie or something and they offer a wide variety of pastries and snacks as well so we've got a uh, full-on breakfast you can get one of the best <laughs> yeah yeah i mean especially when they're charging 11 euros a coffee yeah this is they say it's one of the oldest coffee shops so. all right so we decided to get two cappuccinos and a dessert tart things right there that's already gonna be like 35 euros Cheers. oh yeah i will say it tastes the same as any other cup i've had in italy but what stands apart here is how it's served with the aesthetic around here yeah so you're paying for the old vibes here with the and this is the oldest continuously operating coffee shop in Italy, which is just crazy. I mean, it's been open since 1720, so 303 years. Imagine how many generations for, for people to continuously yeah. work on that coffee shop and make it work. Take a seat outside on the terrace and enjoy the beautiful view of the square while you sip your coffee. Well, let's put it this way. We gotta have some uh, cash to spend. It's definitely worth going for a visit. I'd say it's better that we took Mabel's advice to not get food there. You go there for the experience, right? Like, so the coffee tasted like any other Italian coffee I had. But obviously sometimes it hurts to see the price tag of 11 euros for a coffee. Each sip was like a buck 50. <laughs> <laughs> if you like this video of Italy, I've actually created a playbook which covers the best spots on Italy that cannot be found anywhere on YouTube. All you have to do is go down to the top link in the description, sign up for my newsletter, and it'll be yours in seconds. Number three on the list is to roam the streets of Venice. One of the best things to do in Venice is to simply wander the streets and alleys of the city. Venice is a maze of narrow streets and canals, and there is something new to discover around every corner and bring a map or GPS device as it's easy to get lost in the winding streets. You'll stumble upon beautiful churches, hidden piazzas, and charming shops selling handmade goods. Calle Amor, so it's the uh, Love Street. Take your time and soak up the unique atmosphere of this incredible city. Number four on the list is to take a gondola boat.
quote, no trip to Venice is complete without a ride on a gondola. Gondolas are traditional Venetian boats that are used to navigate the canals of the city. They are often decorated with ornate carvings and paintings, and the gondoliers wear striped shirts and boater hats. A gondola ride is a romantic and peaceful way to see the city from a different perspective. You can hire a gondola at one of the many docks throughout the city. The price can be a bit steep, but it's a once in a lifetime experience that you won't regret. So yeah guys, if you're a teenager here, like this is taking them out on date night there. It's like, hey, you know, back where I come from, it's like, wanna go to the movies? It's like, hey, wanna go to the boat? We'll go on a boat ride through the canals. Number five on the list is to watch the sunset from Rialto Bridge. The Rialto Bridge is one of the most iconic landmarks in Venice. It spans the Grand Canal and offers stunning views of the water and the city. One of the best times to visit the bridge is at sunset. As the sun sets behind the city, the water and the buildings are bathed in a golden glow. The bridge can get crowded during the day, but it's much quieter in the evening. Take your time and enjoy the breathtaking views. Number six on the list is to visit Burano. It's a small little island just off the coast of Venice right here. About a 40 minute ferry ride to get over here. It's famous for its brightly colored houses and intricate lace making. All of these houses are just painted in these really, really bright colors as you can see here. And it just gives it this vibrant feel. You can get to Burano both by ferry, which takes about 40 minutes to an hour from Venice, or you can rent a private boat, which is going to be quite a bit more expensive. As you approach the island, you will be greeted by a beautiful array of colors from the houses, which are pointed in various shades of red, green, blue, and yellow. Take a leisurely stroll through the streets and alleyways and admire the unique architecture and colorful buildings. What would it be like to grow up in a place like this? Number seven on the list is the Le Leonardo da Vinci Museum. Located in the beautiful Scoletta di San Rocco is a fascinating destination for art lovers and history buffs alike. There's a ticket. Oh, how much is it? Eight euro. The museum showcases some of the great artists' inventions, sketches, and scientific theories, giving visitors a unique glimpse into the mind of one of the greatest minds in history. There's just so many mechanisms that are used at a larger scale in obviously modern day technology that originated from this. Number eight on the list is to visit St. Mark's Basilica, a stunning example of the Byzantine architecture. St. Mark's Basilica is one of the most famous landmarks in Venice. This stunning example of architecture is a true masterpiece featuring intricate mosaics, stunning gold leaf decorations. We can't take you guys inside on this video because the line is so long and we're limited on how much we can do in the short three days that we're here. It looks like there's an upper deck you can go on to see probably nice, beautiful view like if you saw our Milan video, go up to that terrace level, be able to see, and you can just see the intricate detail on every part of this place. Number nine on the list is to have dinner along the Grand Canal. One of the most iconic things to do in Venice, picturesque waterway is lined with some of the best restaurants in the city, each offering stunning views of the canal. Oh, that is refreshing. Try that thing out. As you dine, you can watch the boats and gondolas pass by, creating a romantic and unforgettable experience. Looks like a bottle is going to be roughly, let's say, a normal standard one. It seems like 32 to 34 euros for a bottle of wine. You can also try some of the local Venetian specialties, such as risotto with seafood, fresh pasta with clams, or the famous Venetian cuttlefish in black ink sauce. And number 10 on the list, last but not least, is to go shopping in the narrow alleyways. One of the best ways to experience the charm and character of Venice is to go shopping and see what this place has to offer. And the one thing you'll never fall short of is so many shops with many different types of things you can buy. Look at that, the masks are in pretty much every shop. So are these all handmade? Yes, yeah, a little hour. Yeah. And every single one's customized, none of them are the same? Yeah. If you're gonna be trying them on, you gotta pay the uh, one euro in order to test them out if you're not gonna buy them. And those are just a couple examples, but Venice is home to a wide variety of many unique shops. So guys, this is the end of the video. That was just 10 things you can do in Venice. There are so many more things, but if you only have a couple days like we did, these are going to be some amazing things you wanna make sure you add to your itinerary. But I really hope you guys have enjoyed watching this video. Drop a comment below, what's your favorite item on the list that we shared with you? Last but not 
least. If you are looking specifically for tours to do, you can actually check the links down in the description below, and those will give you direct access to some of the things that you can book. I do want to mention I get a small kickback and it helps this channel so much if you use those links, but it doesn't cost you any extra money. But of course, no pressure if you don't want to, but I really hope you guys enjoy your trip and we will see you in the next one.